I'm going to show you in this video how you can buy a house starting with £1,000. If you can't get your hands on £1,000, you probably need to be shot because the £1,000 is not a lot of money. Last year, they printed £100 billion cash into this country. So you can't get £1,000 as a problem. But the average house is about 300 grand, and you need 25% deposit. That's a lot of money, plus stamp duty tax, plus legal fees. You know, you're talking best part of 100 grand cash to buy a house the normal way. But people can't do that because 100 grand, if you're making 30 grand a year, how are you going to save 100 grand? So that's why I have, for the last many, many, many years, I've been brainstorming and I've been squeezing and I've been trying all these different hacks and methods, build my own portfolio, and I'm going to share with you today how you can buy a property just starting with £1,000. There's going to be some people in this video that think that sounds too good to be true, and they're going to be watching the entire video trying to find ways to catch me out. And listen, if that's you, keep watching the video, enjoy, but you're probably never going to be successful. The other type of people that are going to watch this video I guess people say, well, geez, I'm open-minded. I'm just going to test this. I might as well try. Samuel's done it. Samuel's helped thousands and thousands of other people do it from his YouTube videos, from his training programs and his mentorship. I'm just going to watch, be open-minded. I'll try it. I would urge you to be the second type of person. At least, at least just try what I'm saying. Because if you just try it and have a go, just for a few weeks, you'll start seeing results and it won't be long when you land the deal. And then you'll be one of those people that message me on Instagram and say, I was really skeptical at first, but now I've got my first deal. You'll be one of those people. Be camp two, I would recommend. So thousand pounds. Firstly, why do you want to buy a house anyway? I would suggest that the reason you buy a house, don't be buying a house to live in. Don't be trying to, I want to buy a house because I want to own it and live in it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about buying houses as an investment. You want to buy a house for two reasons. Number one is for capital appreciation. What does that mean? If you own a car, what happens to the car over time? It goes down in value. If you own clothes, it goes down in value. The moment you buy it, it goes down in value. You own lots of things, it goes down in value. But you own a house in this country as well, specifically. There's a shortage of houses, an overpopulation of people. If you own a property and sit on it and wait, it's going to go up over time. And you can look back over the last 100 years. On average, every 10 years, properties double in value. And they always say, oh, it won't double the next 10. Then it doubles. Won't double the next 10. Media are always saying, now's a really bad time. Oh, it's scary. No. If you sit on a house and you wait long enough, it goes up in value. Don't wait to buy property. Buy property and wait. Second reason is this. Whilst you're waiting for it to go up in value, you need to be getting cash flow from it. You need to be squeezing the lemon and getting as much cash flow as you can. Now, that being said, how are you going to own a house? How are you going to buy a house with just a thousand pounds? Well, I want to talk to you about a strategy which is an absolutely incredible tool. It is the most underrated strategy for property there is, and it's called purchase lease option agreements. Now, purchase lease option agreements is where you buy a house now, but you pay for it down the line. This is very accepted when you're buying a car. If you buy a car now, you can buy it on PCP, right? You buy it now, you put down a couple thousand, and then in five years, you either walk away, get the keys back, or you buy it and you pay a balloon payment at the end in five years. Very normal. You've probably done it or you've heard about it. Or buying a, a sofa. If you go to DFS sofas, want to buy a sofa for five grand, they don't make you pay for it all up front. They'll say, you know, put down a couple hundred pounds now, you can pay the rest in a year. That's how broke people buy sofas. That's how broke people buy cars. The interesting thing is, you can do the same for property. Right? The media don't want you to know this though. The government certainly don't want you to know this. They'd rather you fall for their help to buy sham. They don't want you to know about purchase lease option agreements, but all rich people buy properties using purchase lease option agreements. All property developers, go on Sunday Times rich list and you see all the rich property developers, guess how they're purchasing land? Purchase option agreements. So I'm gonna get a couple of brokies in the comments saying, oh, it's not real. Yeah, you're a broker, you're, you're a broker. It's how all rich people do it. I'm just the only dude spitting it on YouTube, showing you how it works. Most rich people do it on warehouses, factories, on land. You can also do purchase lease option agreements on small little residential houses and flats here in the UK. Not just in the UK, you can do it in America. I've done it in America. You can do it in most parts of the world. There are some countries where there are exceptions like Scotland. Scotland, don't let you do it. You can do a delayed sale. So I could say in Scotland, I could say I want to buy this house. We'll agree a price, 100 grand. I'll buy it for 100 grand. 
but I'll buy it in seven years. You then got seven years to save. And how are you gonna save? You're gonna save. You're gonna save. Losers save money. You're gonna save by renting it out. You're gonna keep that money every month and then after seven years, use that to buy. You can do that in Scotland. But what you can't do in Scotland, which you can do in England and America and many parts of the world, is you can say, I'll buy it for a hundred grand in seven years. You take control of it now. You pay a small monthly fee, just like a PCP, but you rent it out for hire. You keep that rent, but then in England and in many parts of America, you have an option to buy it, not an obligation. So you don't have to buy it. What does that mean? That means you got your cake and you're eating it too. Because if you agree to buy it for a hundred grand and then in seven years it's worth 200 grand, what are you gonna do? Buy it. However, if you agree to buy it for a hundred grand and in seven years, it's only worth a hundred grand still. You might go, you know what? I've enjoyed the rent for the last seven years. I'm gonna walk away. I'll give the keys back, I'll walk away. You can do that. It's not an obligation to buy, it's an option to buy. When you just registered at the land registry on the title deeds. So how do you find these houses? Where are they? They're everywhere. And right now, as we go into 2024, 2023 was a mess up. In 2023, the Bank of England put base rate up higher than it's been since the crash in 2008. When base rate went up and interest rates went up, what was happening? There's a lot of people buy a house for 100 grand. They bought it. They have to put down a deposit of how much? 25%. So they've got a mortgage of how much? 75 grand. Their mortgage payments might be 200 pounds a month. Their rent might be 600. So they're making a gross profit of 400 pounds a month and they've put down 25 grand to buy the house. And their mortgage, their debt is 75 grand. They bought it a year ago. But then what happened? I'll tell you what happened. Interest rates went up which means that their 400 pound gross profit turned into 100 pound. So now they're only making 100 pound on the house. And now they're like, oh, that sucks. Maybe their tenants stopped paying rent and now they're still having to pay the high mortgage. So they decide, you know what, I'm gonna sell. But what happened to house prices in 2023? They dropped by how much? In some places, up to 25%, which means there's many people trying to sell their house that they bought for 100 and now they can't even sell it for 75. They've got no tenant in. They bought it as an asset, but now it's a liability. And then I come out. I say, hey, I see your house is in negative equity. I see you bought it for 100. Now it's worth 75 and you can't even sell it at 75. I know it's empty and you're paying 400 pounds a month and you were paying 100 pounds a month. Listen, let me buy the house off you for 80 grand, right? I'll buy it off you for 80 grand. However, I'll buy it in seven years time to give the market chance to recover. But in the meantime, I'll pay you 400 pounds a month and I'll become the landlord, I'll become the new owner, I'll deal with all the maintenance. Now, from their perspective, why would they say no to that? It's on at 75, the mortgage is 75. So even if I give them 100% of what they want, all of that money is gonna be used to paying off their mortgage. And they'll be left with no house, no nothing, no money. So if I give them a bit more money, but offer to pay them down the line. But in the meantime, I'm paying the mortgage. I'm paying the everything. I'm paying the insurance. Somebody in the comments. Oh, but some people might. Uh, yes, yeah, some people might say no. But guess what? Some people might say yes. I only need one. I need one person. Yes, I must speak to with hundred. If I get someone saying yes, what's going to happen to me? Now I'm going to rent the property at a much higher rate because I understand things like serviced accommodation. Because I understand things like houses of multiple occupancy. So I'm going to break it up and I'm going to squeeze the lemon. They don't know how to do that. They skipped the seminar. Now I'm making a grand a month. Now I'm using that grand a month to put aside for seven years, which I'm gonna use to buy the house. And how much do you need? What, what, where did the thousand pounds come from? Because that's how much it costs to pay legal fees. Typically legal fees to buy a house on a purchase lease option agreed would be 1,000 pounds. Oh, and you need to pay a one pound option fee as well to make it legally binding. So I should change the title to 1,000 pounds and one to have a property. Now you don't own it, you have the option to own it, but you control it. You rent it out, you save up that rent and you use that rent to then buy it. And you can do this on land, on developments, on commercial property. You can do it on little tiny 50,000 pound flats. This is what I would do if I had a thousand pounds. Now, I, I wish right now I could just show you my laptop and show you how I find these deals and just be going crazy getting you find these deals, getting you on the phone, phoning up these agents and these sellers and pitching. But obviously this is YouTube. So if you want to come spend a day with me finding development opportunities, finding lease option agreements, this is real. 
This is the time. This is the opportunity. So I'm going to be running a one-day seminar, Property Investors Crash Course. I'll leave a link in the description. Faces are limited. So don't be like, oh, or oh, oh, book in a week's time. Do it right now. Tickets are one pound because I want you to come. It's going to be fun. So I'll leave a link in the description. Get booked on. Let's spend a day together. Let's at least try. Okay, as I said before, don't be like, oh, I'm not sure. At least try. And the first way to try is come do it with me. Let's go.